What is FUD? Stands for Fear, Uncertainty, Doubt. Now, are there times when spreading such a message might make sense? I have to say 100% there are times when spreading such a message makes sense, and that's when you have evidence, when you have factual backing for what you're saying, you have the numbers, you have the analysis, and you have an opinion based on those things, um, or maybe even just a really strong feeling uh, related to a certain project or a stock or whatever it is, um, and you may share those feelings in a responsible way, um, and there's a time when that's appropriate, and there's a time when that's not appropriate because it just doesn't make any sense, and it actually reflects poorly on you uh, as an individual and certainly on um, your future analysis on, on similar projects. And so I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what not only what this... Uh, this, this fudding is that people keep referring to, but is there a way to responsibly do it? And um, when is it appropriate? And what type of language we should be using? Because one thing I keep seeing is, uh, I mean, I, I understand that some of these websites, like, let's say this one here, coinmarketcap.com. Now, this may be like wading into the dredges of the internet, like, uh, say, 4chan or something. Um, and you're seeing these comments that are just incredibly negative with with zero backing, and so you know, I keep I keep seeing these. I see some comments on even my own videos or other YouTubers, whatever. Uh, that just they have there's nothing behind them, and so to to me, I think your sentiment, even if you're going to share an opinion, let's say you're going to share a opinion that you have on a protocol, and you have no evidence behind it, you just you just feel a certain way. Like on a, on a video earlier, I was mentioning Seifu. Um, and I said, for some reason, the back of my mind, I feel a little weird about the project, the protocol, but I don't really know why. And so I'm honest about that. I don't say, oh, the CEO is a horrible person. Uh, I don't say that I have any, any factuals, any actual numbers to back it up. I just, I can state that and say, I don't know why I feel X, Y, Z way, but full disclosure, I'm still invested in this, in Seifu as an, as an example. Um, and so I think that's an honest way to present that opinion. Um, but, you know, so when we scroll through some of these, some of these sites, it's just like, you know, drip, go to, go to, go to zero. And it's like, oh, it'll drip to zero. Ha ha ha. Straight line. Look at the charts, whatever. Stop fooling yourself. And it's just these people who think they're incredibly smart. And all I can think is that they, they bought too high, you know, and they, and they don't have any faith in the project or, or that's not it, and they're actually in other projects, and they understand that a lot of people in this space are in the same projects together, and so they want to shift funds from other projects that they, uh, whether they, they've they researched or not, they've probably done very little research, and they want to shift funds and, and money towards whatever project they're on. Um, but a lot of it just seems disingenuous. There's no actual factual basis. For instance, these people who are freaking out over, say, like the price drop, um, they could have gotten in way too high. They could have gotten in at the all-time high where I did. You know, I, I came in around 130. Um, but what what have I done? I've I've dollar cost average since then. Um, I've been buying at around 55, 40. I bought it like 45, and I bought again at like 35. So my overall, even it's a small bag, because I've only invested what I could afford to lose, right? We want to do that. Um, but, you know, I've gotten my average down to maybe 55, 50, somewhere in there per drip. And so that makes me feel a lot better about the wins or loses, because I still have long-term faith in this, in this project specifically. But that's, that's my point, is, uh, you know, that's the first thing I would, I would say about some of these people, is that... For one, maybe they've just bought in too high or they're trying to shift funds away somewhere else. But they're not pointing to any fundamentals of the project. Like, if they look at the long-term charts, obviously, we were hovering. Look, I mean, I wasn't here at this point, but look where they're hovering around the 26, I mean, under 30. So under $30 from, what, around August 1st, August 1st to December. So that's a pretty good length of time, right? They're just hovering here, wait, uh, uh, longer even than where we're at right now, right? I mean, it's just this hovering at this below 30 before there was this rapid upshoot. And so people who bought in here or they're only looking a couple months back, they're saying, oh, this is just this horrible downward trend. Um, 
but they never look at it in the opposite way. Because when, when this is on a rapid climb, like when you're somewhere in this uh, Janu- when you're in this December to January to February, and it's on this rapid climb upward to the all-time high, no one complains about that. No one says, oh, look at how fast we're climbing. This is wrong. We're going to have a huge pullback or a reversal. I mean, people who are in um, stocks, I guess, when they do actual investing in, in stocks, and I shouldn't say actual investing because this is also crypto still has a lot of game theory to it. It has all the same type of uh, – it's not the exact same, but it has a lot of the same economics at play uh, if you're familiar with how other financials work. You can kind of get a feel for how crypto works after not not too too long in the game, I should say. But no, no one ever says that. I don't hear anyone complaining when there's this rapid upshoot to these higher prices or when they're staying pretty steady. But then there's just this this fear, uncertainty, doubt. There's just this uh, constant complaining all, all the way down, um, you know, regardless of what else is happening in the protocol, even if there's reasons for that that drop. I'm just trying to read through some of these more asinine comments here. Uh, you know, a lot of them are sarcastic, but... And it's not that, that, I mean, a lot of these are trolling, right? That's the thing. If they're trying to shift funds away to other projects, they're just trolling. They're just, they have nothing to back it up with. And that's that's what the main thing that I wanted to address here is that if you do have negative things to say about Drip or any protocol, any anything really in, in the world, it's not just about um, financials. If you have anything negative to say, the sentiment has to be honest for people to take you seriously and it needs to be at the right uh, ratio. It needs to be appropriate to the level of uh, not only expertise that you have, but completely honest with why you're saying what you're saying. Um, you know, obviously, these people who are trying to shift funds away to other projects are not going to tell you why they are um, saying the negative things they're saying. Um, and it does work. I think it does work. You know, you, you they wouldn't do this well. I shouldn't say they wouldn't do it if it weren't effective because people all over the world do things that are not effective over and over again. That being said, I think it is effective because when you flood these these comment threads like this, this is the first price I mean, this is the first price website that usually comes up for me. If I search for drip coin price or drip network price, this is usually the first site I see. So if I get in here and the overall sentiment is marked as bearish and every single one of these comments at the top um, are are incredibly bearish and uh, negative, even without being backed up by anything, that's kind of the sentiment that uh, a new investor may come away with. Um, and so to kind of counteract that, you can you can start to see why some of these Telegram chats, like uh, the Drip official Telegram chat or the Animal Farm official Telegram chat, why they do um, try to take such a strict toler- uh, anti-FUD type of tolerance level, because they're combating sites like this, where it's just constant negativity, and in the YouTube comments all over YouTube, um, this constant negativity, when we're in a downtrend, we're on a rapid uptrend, these people disappear, you know, that's why they say paper hands, because they just fold um, on the way down, they're selling, you know, people are selling now at these low, low prices, which is just insane to me, but that's what they're doing, they're they're falling prey to this whole fear, uncertainty, doubt, Um you know that they're not people who have been compounding for a long time because you just you wouldn't be selling right now. I mean, maybe if you have a whole lot uh, extra, you know, and you you have a lot you can claim, but it, it makes no sense to me. I mean, unless you just have zero faith in the in the future of the project. Um, I'm getting I'm getting a little sidetracked here. So we're talking about creating this sentiment though, and just you know cut, making sure that it's a the sentiment that you're sharing is appropriate with the level of knowledge you have. Like if you were completely negative on drip as a whole or any protocol, if you come into the YouTube comments or you come into our, into my Telegram uh, channel that I have or I hopefully come into some of the other Telegram channels and they'll listen to you, if you come in there with factual numbers and you say, you know, this is my experience, this is the trend I'm seeing, this is why I think it's not sustainable, X, Y, Z, that's amazing to me. Like I, I would love to hear that. I would love to see that analysis and I've had a great conversation with um, uh, his last name's Tong, I think. What I cannot remember the guy's name right now, and I'll have to find it on YouTube. Is that Andrew Tong? Maybe. In- anyway, someone recommended that I check out his video on the sustainability of Drip, and uh, you know that particular video. I-, I had kind of a lengthy conversation with him. I don't feel like his video was uh, the 
ultimate representation of the longevity of drip or, or sustainability, but he explained it in um, clear terms, illustrated it with you know real world objects to walk us through how the dollars flow. And it, and it was interesting and it was well done. And he was never incredibly negative, like, oh, drip sucks and blah, blah, blah. He just kind of concluded with his conclusion that he didn't think it had a lot of sustainability. And that's perfectly fine. And that's something we can debate and have a conversation about. But it's kind of like having a political debate where you just insult the other the other people in the debate. There's no uh, intellectual level. There's no actual conversation being had. And you would hope that everyone um, who everyone who's actually paying attention, who wants to follow someone with some level of intelligence or uh, some level of actual analysis on, on a protocol or, or a project or new endeavor, you would hope that they would see through the negative comments that have no backing, but I don't think they always do. And so that that is why I think some of these groups are so anti-fudder, uh, as they call it, you know, anti-fudding, because they don't want just negative comments. That makes no sense. Now, if you, but if you have something to bring to the table, I would hope that some of these Telegram chats would listen. And a great example for you is that um, Kelly Snook, who I've, who I've uh, mentioned multiple times, her Drip Rocket Science group is really good. They're really uh, factual, mathematical, science-based. Um, she has a separate Telegram group that you can also get invited to called Drip Sustainability or Drip Sustainability Discussion, something like that. And that's the whole point of it is to um, to really talk about the sustainability and how long drip can go on, and so there are, uh, and just openly talk about that and, and analyze it with some calculators, run the numbers, and so there are people doing that, um, and you can join in on those discussions if you have things to offer. But these uh, senseless negativities, you know, I, I haven't just deleted anybody's comment. I haven't removed anyone's comments on YouTube, on Telegram, anywhere. Um, but I understand these huge groups, why they do, um, because they're, the level of sentiment from whoever it is just doesn't match what they're bringing to the table. Now, and even at, I think even at the higher level, let's say you had the ultimate expertise on a subject and your conclusion was that it wasn't very sustainable, you know, at that point, it still doesn't make sense to just come out of the woodwork with incredibly negative, only negative comments um, that are, say, ad hominem tax on the de developers or people who are invested or um, just anyone in the general community, because at that point it's unprofessional and it just it lowers your reputation as a person. It it lowers everyone's uh, view on you and makes them even less likely to listen to what you have to say. And so, if you had something valuable to say that you wanted to communicate, it seems like to me you would do that in a professional, respectable way or else you just wouldn't do it at all. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know, that's a, that's kind of a, a rant as to how I see this, this fear, uncertainty, doubt, and how people spread this around. Uh, but the other thing I want to touch on besides that, besides having an appropriate ratio of, you know, coming correct with the right sentiment, um, because you don't have to be positive, right? You don't have to be positive about DRIP or any of these protocols if you don't like them. But first point, why are you commenting on something that, you don't see a future in because if it's to warn people about it you're going about it the wrong way just by creating negativity without any backing uh you know that that's silly you know so so why even but why even post about it to begin with you know two is it just because you invested and you feel like you've lost a lot because you've lost nothing until you sell and a lot of people are selling but if you haven't sold why are you on these comments you know why are you uh, on these YouTube channels when you're making these these negative comments is it because you want to continue to let the price dive like uh, you know but you don't have the the ability to manipulate the price because you don't have enough uh, you're not a huge whale you don't can't really do much you know you're manipulating it with your sentiment uh, I guess that is a game that you could play uh, that is a game that could be played and I, and I understand it because I've even said you know, selfishly I hope this continues on a downward trend for now i'd like to get to those lower 20s uh 15 put us back at 10 dollars. i don't care I'm, I'm going to load up when that happens um and i've given a lot of reasons as to to why but any extra funds i had i would throw in that low um i do have enough faith this in a swing back up but but even me saying that i hope that i've been forthcoming and honest enough on all these videos that this is some type of gamble like there's I can't predict that. You can't predict that. And so 
even a YouTuber saying, I think this is going to swing, uh, is, you know, not something you can, you can just take as, uh, as a, as financial advice, uh, because it could go either way. It could continue on to say zero and the whole project could explode and, and I could lose everything I've invested, but I've not invested anything I couldn't afford to lose. And so that's also why I don't have these extremely negative sentiments because if it does crash out tomorrow and I'm completely wrong, um, I'll move on with my life. Like, project ended oh well move on to another one that seems to be doing better um you know these are these things are kind of hit and miss but it makes no sense to spread the fear uncertainty doubt uh, on your own investment unless you're planning to load up a whole lot and you're just intentionally manipulating which i still think is is kind of disingenuous and and irritating and and kind of kind of swarmy you know um it's a valid way to play the game it is a way you can play it it just doesn't match with my uh, principles directly. But so, yeah, all that, all that then to say also is, is do people, I don't know if people understand what a scam is. Like when you look through some of these uh, other comments here, and I know this coin market cap, I mean, this obviously is just random anonymous people posting comments, but someone saying here, uh, you know, do, you un do you guys understand this is a scam yet? So someone calling it a scam and then, if you, and if you scroll through these, you'll, you'll see a lot of these. Like, oh, I'd love to see this garbage tank, $0 volume. He's just calling out because there was a, I was, I was looking at it that day. This particular site had a weird glitch on one moment where it showed zero volume. It wasn't correct on any other site. Um, you know, wind stop crashing, uh, scam, 110% scam. It's just like, do, do they understand what a scam is? That's, so that's the, other, that's the other element here. If you're going to talk about something, use correct terms, um, explain why you think it is the thing that it is. If you think it's a Ponzi, if you think it's a pyramid, you know, I think you have to explain, you have to clarify what that means to you for one. And then two, you know, if you're saying it's a Ponzi, it's a pyramid, explain to me how general economies are not that. Explain to me how everything in the world is any different because it all has value only because we give it value, right? That's how everything works. And, um, you know, everything works as an exchange of, of services. You have to keep putting new things in to keep getting things out because there is no such thing as just free made up money. There's no such thing as free made up, um, you know, currencies or value that doesn't happen. So even think about the labor market. Think about, oh, I, I go to work and I get, I get currency. You are putting value into the system through your conversion of your labor into the economy. And then in exchange, we've all agreed on a standardized currency. And so you get that in exchange. But that's all you've done is you've put in new, quote unquote, capital. You've put in new capital, new labor, and then exchanged it for a value that you then use to pay for other things. If everyone stopped going to work, or let's say the analogy here is they stopped putting money into uh, Drip or one of these protocols, Although the, these things wreck themselves much quicker because there's such a lower overall, you know, um, liquidity that's that's present, which is why they try to build that up a whole lot at the start, get a good liquidity pool going. But if everyone decided not going to work, mm, there's no new quote unquote capital. There's no new labor going in to be exchanged for value, and so that system also essentially collapses. I mean, the, there's uh, this rapid inflation. There's no, uh, there's, there's people not valuing the dollar because uh, at that point, no one's receiving the dollar, right? There's no one's going to work. No one's receiving the currency. They only have what they have and they are going to spend it, I guess, to, <laughs> to actually to be able to live. And if they didn't do anything else, then the system wouldn't keep functioning. And that's my whole point is that Everything only has value because we give it value. We agree to work in exchange for a certain currency. If we went to work and, uh, you know, someone paid us in drip and we valued it enough, <laughs> then we'd be using drip as the currency, right? Everything's a Ponzi. Everything's a pyramid. Everything's a scam in some way. Whenever we stop participating, that's just how things work. So when they say this is a scam, that... <laughs> A scam, scam really, that word implies malicious intent, right? That, that implies malicious intent on the part of the developers. And so if you're going to say scam or you're going to say pyramid scheme or Ponzi scheme, you have to show me where 
Forex is raking in all of this money all and why it would benefit him to have this downtrend all the way down to zero and not have longevity in a project that would go on for uh, X amount of years. What what uh, what benefit would he have? You know, because on the one hand, you'd have this project that's has this longevity and it goes on for, say, I don't know, just you pick a random example. Say it goes on for five years and you have these upswings and downswings. You have these cycles that every market goes through until it kind of finds its level when it finds its good support levels um, and stays steady. So if this is something that has a long term uh, ability to last that long, you have to show me you know, how tanking it right now um would benefit the developers would benefit forex shark in the long term wouldn't he make more money um in the other way with all the with all the the other ways that that he can pull money out of the system and create this whole ecosystem around it with all these partnerships and uh you know merch later on and new protocols built onto this one like the animal farm and they all interconnect wouldn't that make uh, 50 times as much, 100 times as much more sense and profit in the long term. And he's a smart guy. He's not He's not just in here to try to rug pull. It doesn't seem like it. You know, that's not what I'm seeing. And so if you're going to say use those words, like this is a scam, you have to prove in some way that the developer is acting in a malicious fashion and trying to steal your funds, like just have you put all your funds in and then, and then have them stolen. You know, I think all these negative comments come from people who will probably have a smaller bag like myself, especially, um, or they don't have a smaller bag and they overinvested. We've we've all probably been there and had to learn that lesson. But if you couldn't afford the ten grand and you put ten grand in and now you've seen it tank from your one thirty to thirty, I get it. I get why you would be upset. But it's not um, it's not a scam. Like there's no indication that it's a scam or anything malicious. And so you you keep throwing that word around without knowing. Like, it doesn't mean what you think it means. And so I don't know why that that really grinds my gears. It's frustrating uh, because it just, not only because I'm invested in it and it doesn't help the protocol at all, but it doesn't make sense. It's not intellectually honest. Um, it's not sticking by some type of principle to be honest or uh, show a good example for your uh, your fellow humans who are trying to, you know, make good decisions and invest in things and, and make money themselves. Um, it's, like I've said earlier, it's a great way to game the system but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me in principle or in practice. Uh, you know, I think we should all be, as a whole community, if we want to be good actors in these protocols, uh, which is what gives them longevity and keeps them running and printing money for us, we want to be honest what, about what we're talking about. So we need to understand the terms. Uh, what is a scam? What is a pyramid? What is a Ponzi? If it is a pyramid or a Ponzi, explain to me how that's different than the rest of the world's economies and things that we value, even all the way down to gold that only has value because we give it value. Explain to me how that's different. I would love to learn. I love to uh, absorb new knowledge and have constructive criticism. So if I'm completely off my rocker and wrong, I want to know but you have to come correct with facts. You cannot uh, just say, oh, this is an obvious scam, and then duck out and refuse to elaborate because that means nothing. It means nothing to nobody. You know, it, it means nothing to anybody. You can't, um, you, you can't do that with like the smug look on your face and then dip out of the comments and act like you've educated anyone on your opinion. You've, you've essentially shared a worthless chain of uh, words together in Telegram or whatever it is, and then wonder why people you know throw that ban hammer down or why people delete your YouTube comments. Again, I, I have not. I've not removed any comments um, except for obvious like scam links from bots. Um, but it, it's just a, it's a really weird, weird attitude that I see people have. And it's not just about drip. It's about anything. It's about um, anything else they're calling a scam that has had no indication of that. People are really quick to jump to that, and even though there are a lot of scams in this DeFi, DGen crypto space, I don't think that is a genuine way to describe Drip or the Animal Farm, and I've seen no indication to say that it is uh, accurate. And so if you're going to come with those type of comments, you just, uh, with this fear, this uncertainty, doubt that you're spreading, it needs to make sense. So bring some numbers bring the analysis, break it down, and then there's an actual discussion to be had. And I think that is really beneficial for everyone. We'd all benefit from having those types of discussions, um, but we're not going to benefit from 
useless ad hominem attacks to developers and to people who invested in the system and who still have faith in it. Um, you know, and that's just that's just where we are. Well, if you guys made it this far into the content, I know that was probably a bit of a long one. Um, you know, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the likes and subscribes. Um, this would be a great conversation to continue in the Telegram chats um, that I do have linked. Uh, and if you're interested in those sustainability discussions, like in Kelly Snook's uh, Telegram chat, I can probably get you invited to that if she has an open link to it. If not, I can at least get you into the Drip Rocket Science group. Uh, I can invite you over there with that link, and then you can ask to be led into the sustainability discussion. They haven't fully ramped that up yet. They're going to pull out some calculators and start running all the numbers, and they haven't really got that full speed yet. But um, it's going to be a very in-depth breakdown break breakdown of uh, the whole ecosystem and kind of checking out the longevity of the the whole network of Drip and the Animal Farm. So that'll be a really interesting discussion. Uh, Either way, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Hope you're having a great morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever time of the world it is for you. Hope you guys stay safe out there. If you're in any of the conflict type of zones, or even if you're not, you may have some family, relatives, etc. So wishing everyone safe travels, and I will see you on the next one. Have a great one, guys. Thanks.